Before we get this review done, I want to do a little magic trick. Now, just like how when Thanos in Infinity War, when he snaps his fingers and everything changes, well, I'm about to do something that's about to change the entire channel on this thing. So, can I get a drum roll, please? I got a new setup, new camera, new tripod, new everything. And finally, I can actually say goodbye and retire these old fashioned ones. But hey, they've been with me since the beginning, but I'm, I've greatly appreciated, but gotta move forward. So anyways, hit the intro. Godzilla King of the Monsters was better than Godzilla 2014 and worse than Kong Skull Island. Damn. And in this film, it takes place five years after the events of the original film, where this time Godzilla is taking on King Ghidorah and other giant monsters as they're awakened. Back in 2019 when the movie came out, I was looking very forward to this film. It wasn't my most anticipated film because of some of the negative stuff that I had towards the first film, but with the marketing on this movie, damn, it was perfect. The trailer was beautiful, the poster was on point, you had a cast of talented actors on board, it just felt like they were finally heading in the right direction. And did they? Well... In some ways they did. First things first, what did they get right about this film? There is a bit more Godzilla action sequences, which isn't saying much in compared to the first Godzilla film in Kong Skull Island, but if you easily look at it and you actually see Godzilla, it's easily one of the best parts in the whole film. So yeah, pretty much giant monsters all out attacking, hell breaking loose, so pretty much it's a Godzilla film. You can really tell that the director loves and respects the heck out of the Godzilla mythology when it comes to the creatures, designs, and the characteristics of the monsters. There is a lot of easter eggs in here that are a tribute to past Godzilla films, and I'm not going to say any of them because this is a non-spoiler review, but I'll just say this. If you're a true Godzilla fan, then you actually know what I'm talking about. The cinematography is amazing, the music score is amazing, the special effects are amazing. I'm literally saying that all three of these things are amazing, and the fact that I'm saying amazing three times is not because it's an opinion, it's literally a statement. These three things literally carry the film so hard to the point where it puts pressure on their backs. I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking just like a little carry, I'm talking spinal. Godzilla 2014 made me glad to see Godzilla revitalized and reborn as a modern day version of what we've seen as his character, but King of the Monsters was able to make me feel like the little kid who saw Godzilla for the first time on VHS and when the when the film comes all together and you see the monsters just going at it it's literally just perfect in all its rainy and dark glory but yes I am aware of the flaws the many many flaws the problem that I have with this film were the human characters there are something like 10 characters in here I have never not gave a fuck about every single one of them until now every single one. If you thought the human characters in Godzilla or Kong Skull Island were bad, well, this is the worst of the worst. Nothing will ever top this. I have never hated main characters like I have with this entire family. Godzilla King of the Monsters starts with this family we have never met before and they start screaming the name of their lost child in the middle of a fight between Godzilla and the Mutos from the previous film. And this scene is sinister by nature. It's beautiful at every level of production. The problem here is that we've never met this kid. He is lost from the first frame. How can we care about this family when the main drive force of their actions through the story is someone we have never met? We can't care about someone if we can't care about what they care about. And there are seven other characters in this film where they're just pretty much there to just give exposition and tell the story. But majority of the film, with there's a lot of scenes in them that pretty much just come off extremely boring and annoying. And the sad part is, that's what it's like throughout majority of the film. Heck, Godzilla, even when he shows up in the film, and that's not even 40 minutes into the film, and when he finally does show up, it's only for a 2 minute and 30 second fight. Speaking of Godzilla, what Gareth Edwards was able to do right in the first film was make us feel, the audiences, that we were inferior to these creatures. And that had to do with great direction and cinematography. But in this film, we don't feel that, that sense of these characters are massive, these titans are huge, they're intimidating, like they're larger than life. No, that is pretty much what you get from the first film, but in this film, you never really get that sense of feeling at all. It kind of feels like a character is playing action figures with their little toys of Godzilla and they're just going at it. 
that's pretty much just the whole thing. Also, the movie's tone does not know exactly what it wants to be. At times, it is serious, but then majority of the script, it is filled with cringy one-liner dialogue for comedic relief, and it doesn't even land, nor does it feel deserved. And here's the thing, if you have a really bad script with very bad dialogue, you rely heavily on comedic relief and comedic lines, but if the thing is, if those don't land, then it just takes you completely out of the film. So yeah, there is nothing like going up at 3 a.m. in the morning watching King of the Monsters with bad dialogue and characters you don't really care about, and the dialogue just makes you want to fall asleep. That is probably the worst exaggerated thing I have ever said, but just then again, this movie was bad too, so yeah. But with all that said, I will admit that I do have a soft spot for this movie, and that is all because I grew up watching the Japanese Godzilla films where you really don't care about the human characters at all, and all you just want to see is Godzilla fight other giant monsters, and that's it. And in bits and pieces here and there, but mostly in Act 3, that is where the film delivers, just with top-notch production, minus the script, of course. So if you're just here for an all-out action movie and don't care about anything, then this movie is an 8 out of 10 for you. But if you're looking for a movie with a compelling story and to go along with and invest your time into, then for the final score, I'm going to give Godzilla King of the Monsters a 4 out of 10. I am aware that this is not a very good film, and I am completely aware of some of the flaws that it had, but I cannot help but to also like this film at the same time, even though if I'm aware that there's a lot of BS in this film, so... Just like a relationship, it's complicated. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Look forward to my next movie review, Godzilla vs. Kong. I am aware that I'm a little late to the party, but that is because I spent some time trying to adjust to this new camera and try to get some stuff out of the way. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe here to the channel for more content. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.